Hello and welcome back to Hobby Fist Plays Dota 2. My name is Greg and today we're going to be talking about Underlord. Now to reiterate what these videos are about, they're extremely basic fundamental videos focusing on the hero itself and how to have a basic grasp and concept and understanding of how the hero is played. That also means I'm not really going to talk about any of the other heroes in the game unless it's necessary. Uh, there's one or two examples of that in this game, but generally this is just focusing on Underlord and his spells and how they affect him and the enemies you're casting it on. So let's talk about his spells. Now his first one's called Firestorm. It calls down waves of fire that damage enemy units in the target area, burning for additional damage over time. The radius is 400, wave count is 6, wave damage is 25, wave interval is 1, max burn HP damage is 1%, burn duration is 12, cooldown is 12 seconds, and it costs 100 mana. Now I'm only going to be talking about the level 1 here. There's 4 max levels you can put into the first 3 spells for Underlord, but just for simplistic sake I'm only going to talk about the level 1 form of all the spells. So what this spell is it's a area on the uh, map that you target that's what target area is the radius of the spell is 400 the wave count is six so that means the damage has six waves of damage and each damage is 25 the interval between the six waves is one second and on top of that 25 damage every wave for six waves the target is also going to take one percent of their max hp as burn damage and that burn duration lasts for two seconds so what this spell is is you cast on a point 25 25 damage one second later another 25 six times total and on top of that they take one percent of their max health as damage on top of that 25 they take per instance of damage and that burn lasts for two seconds each time this is a uh, pretty strong spell it's either his strongest or second strongest one he has this just got buffed in the most recent dota patch which i believe was 7.06 d all the patch notes are up at dota2.com where if you want to find out everything that's been changed in the game it's always listed there on that website this is your main harassment this is what nuker means under his uh different i guess categories he falls under nuker means you can quickly kill enemy heroes using high damage spells with low cooldowns this is a pretty high damage spell it's cooldown is 12 seconds that's pretty low this only really can do a lot of damage if they stay in it for a while that's i guess one way to counter this spell is you see it put down on the ground maybe you'll get hit once or twice but just get out of the aoe for it the radius is 400 that's you know big enough to cover the wave of creeps but you can still move around it his second spell is called pit of malice it's a deadly pit that's conjured at the target location any unit that enters will be rooted for 0.9 seconds each enemy unit within the pit is affected every 3.6 seconds. Its radius is 375, the pit duration is 12, disabled interval is 3.6, and again the duration is 0.9. Cooldown is 32 seconds, and this also costs 100 mana to cast. So just like Fire, uh, Firestorm, this has it's another targeted spell that you put on the ground, and the second, or the instant you put this on the ground, any enemy unit that's in it gets rooted for 0.9 seconds. So if they happen to stay within that spell for another 3.6 seconds, they get rooted again. So the way this spell breaks down is it's a 3.7, the, the radius 3.75, and instantly rooted. They get stuck in there, move around. As long as they're still within that ring in the ground, it's a really distinct ring. You can easily see the borders of it. If they're in there for another few 3.6 seconds, they get rooted again. This is an okay spell. It's not really the thing you max out levels in first. It's usually used to hold enemies in place. It's a root. That doesn't mean it's a stun. They can still attack and use abilities. They just can't move. So you got to be kind of careful with this. It's a really good item to keep enemy from getting away. So either you can land this spell on them so they can take a bit more damage than they normally would, or other uh, heroes on your team can actually kill them. It's a pretty decent spell. This is what dis his disabler means, guaranteed disable one or more of their spells, where this will just keep them in place. Again, it's not a stun. They're still able to use abilities. They just can't use... Um, 
they just can't move. Uh, his third ability is called Atrophy Aura. Uh, nearby enemy units are weakened, losing a portion of their base damage. If a unit dies while under this effect, Underlord gains bonus damage. Its radius is 900, damage reduction is 7%, bonus damage uh, creep is 5, bonus damage hero is 30, and duration is 30. So what this is, it's an aura, which all that means is you don't have to cast or anything. The second you put any levels into it, it's just automatically on. Uh, its radius is 900, which is, as you can, it's it's bigger than actually both of these combined. It's a substantially large enough area. I believe its aura is large enough that if anybody wants to hit you, they're going to have to be within the aura. I think there's like one or two items that can get you with outside that range. And there may be one hero that can actually attack outside that. But generally, every in the game if they want to hit you have to be within this aura what that means is their right click their normal way of attacking you they're going to do seven percent less damage to you if anything within that radius dies you get bonus damage bonus damage from creep and creep is basically anything that's not a uh hero a hero from the other team i believe it can also count for creeps you deny if any of the heroes on the other team summon little minions like there's a spot, there's a hero on the other team that uh, has a bunch of minions. Every time they die, you get bonus damage. If a hero dies, you get 30. And every instance of the bonus damage goes away in 30 seconds. That doesn't mean every time you get bonus damage, it doesn't reset the duration for all the bonus damage. I kill a creep, I get five bonus damage. 30 seconds later, that five damage is gone. If like three or four seconds after I get that five bonus damage from a creep, I kill another creep, that five damage goes away 30 seconds later. There's no, it doesn't accumulate and then just keep resetting. It's just every time you get bonus damage, that instance of bonus damage goes away in 30 seconds. So as I said, this is, um, I may have said this, I'm not sure. This is either his strongest or second strongest ability. It's what call, makes him be a durable, it makes it says he has the ability to last longer in team fights. This co this is super strong. If there's anything that you can do to reduce the damage the other team will do to you or anybody within that aura, that's better for you. That means that if anybody tries to kill you or gank you before you can get away, they have to do more damage than they normally would. And there's a really good example of how just how powerful this spell is, or aura spell, whatever you want to call it, when... I believe I get ganked by four or five heroes, and uh, I don't think I actually get killed. It's been a while since I did this video, or I actually played this game, but I believe that I had like four or five guys go on me and they didn't kill me. Just because the damage reduction that this aura deals out kept me alive way longer than if I didn't have it maxed out or leveled at all. So that's why usually these are this spell and this one are the two that you max out usually this one first this second sometimes you can switch it up and do it the other way around but these two are the super strong abilities they have right now and his ultimate is called dark rift opens a dark rift at the target friendly unit's position after a short delay underlord and all nearby friendly heroes are teleported to that unit location dark rift can be canceled at any time during the cast if it is canceled in this way or the target unit dies before the spell becomes active dark rift goes into cooldown so radius is 600, teleport delay is 6, cooldown is 130 seconds, and costs 75 mana. So what this is is basically a AoE teleport. You can cast it uh, on friendly units, which means it can be anywhere within your base, any tower, any friendly creep, or if there's any minion that you, anybody in your team has summoned, you can teleport to that too. But if the thing you're teleporting to dies before the six seconds you don't teleport so this is a great uh group escape spell uh it sucks that it's six seconds it's way longer than you think it is when you're in the game uh the second you cast it as long as you don't like if you're trying to escape back to your base the second you cast it as long as you don't die that spell is going to go off so it's a great way to get everybody out on your team if say you finish getting an objective on the map and you don't want everybody to rush in and kill you. You can time this right when you get the thing you want. Say you you kill a tower. Cast this, everybody gets around you because the radius is visually pretty easy to tell when you got to get in it. It goes off, everybody gets teleported back to base, everyone's safe. You can also use this to teleport to someone who is by themselves on the map who's trying to farm. You can get like you or a couple other people, teleport to them, cast the roots, cast your pit of malice down to keep them in place, put this down so they start taking a bunch of damage. Other people around you can start attacking them too because they're held in place. That's generally how the spell is used. It's 
all right. It's a, it's pretty good. The six seconds again is super long. It's if you sit there and count six seconds now, it doesn't seem like that much. But when you're in game, it feels like it's forever. Now, I said before in the Abaddon video that all the heroes in the game, all their uh, spells and abilities kind of complement each other there really isn't like one or two spells that really make no sense with all of the other abilities that they have so how this how this hero works is you, you cast this on creeps in the lane that you're trying to farm they all die within your aura you get bonus damage uh if anybody on the other team tries to farm you can either cast this on them so they start taking damage just walk up as this is going down, killing all the creeps, you get bonus damage. You can just start going up and right-clicking them. And if anybody turns around and tries to attack you, they're going to start doing less damage just because of the aura you have on you. You can put this down to keep them from getting away from all this damage. So you can just hold them in place, right-click more. They start taking six waves of damage, which is pretty substantial amount. And you just kind of snowball from there. With uh, the creeps dying, you get more damage. Say you kill a hero in that, you get a bunch of damage. Uh, you can move on to the next hero. There's no cap to the amount of bonus damage you can take with this aura. So theoretically, I guess you could just have infinite damage if somehow you found a way to kill infinite amount of things all at once. But after 30 seconds, all that damage is going to go away. So this hero generally is played in the offlane which means that offlane heroes don't need a lot of farm, which means they don't need a lot of gold to be effective. They just need to get some levels. Underlord's a little different that this spell is strong enough to kill a bunch of creeps in the lane that you can get gold that way and also harass a little bit the carry in their lane because generally how offlane works is you're going to be up against the other team's carry lane and carries need to farm a lot you know get a lot of gold to get items to be powerful enough to carry their team to win the game that's what carry means is they're you know not really that strong to start the game but eventually over time when they if they get enough items they can uh, be strong enough to win the game for their team generally in carry lanes there all the carries are supported by supports that's what the support means is they're there to protect the carry to farm and get money to get items all the while preventing you the offlaner from being able to harass their carry and deny them any experience to get any levels that's generally how those two lanes work is the offlaner needs to find a way to at least get some levels all while not dying i mean you're probably going to die once or twice that's kind of expected but you just want to bully when you can but be smart about it carry enough uh, regenerative items to keep you alive all the while harassing the carry lane well enough so they can't farm or they're scared to farm because if you're doing your job right you've gotten a bunch of levels over them which is another concept I'll, I'll go over real quick um, the more people you have within in the lane to farm the amount of total experience is less per person because you have to divvy up that experience between uh in this game's instance there's three people within the lane so the same amount of exp is uh i guess you could say every time you kill a creep they give a specific amount of uh, exp now if there's three people in the lane that specific amount gets divided up between three people but since i'm in off lane by myself any creep that dies within and I'm within range of getting it, I'm getting all of that EXP myself. So ideally, if everything works out perfectly for the offlaner, I'm going to have way like high, I'm going to be higher level than they are. So I can actually get more points into spells so I can harass them more than they would me because I've been able to get more EXP because I'm the only one in lane. Whereas all three of them in our lane, they're going to be under leveled and I should be able to win my lane. Now that's the basic core of Underlord, uh, I hope I've explained this well enough. If there's any questions or any errors that I've come up, please just let me know in the comments below. I This is the second video I've made in this. I can't count them how many times I've actually done this video over and over again just because I've goofed up some, uh, some stat numbers here and there. Or I've tried to edit you knows and ums so much i got sick of it and just thought i'm gonna scrap this whole video and start again so without further ado let's get into the game click this start the game all right so super quick uh, i have to go into player perspective for me oxygen rich atmosphere so giant testicle monsters wait for this so how 
the start of the game works is you need to buy items to keep you alive. So the way the game works is when you start off, you need to keep items to buy to, uh, buy items to keep you alive, and then as the game progresses, you start buying items to either complement your hero or counter the heroes on the other team. Now, as I said before, I'm not really going to get into the other heroes on this team just because that would uh, muddy the waters a bit, and I'm just here to really focus on Art of the Lord. There's some really good examples in this of making sure that you have enough regen items on you to keep you in lane, or there's an example of me messing that up, and there's also an example on the other team of them not getting enough uh, regen items. Now, you might think when you first start the game, it's like, why do I need to buy items that are consumables that are just going to disappear after I use them a couple of times. That just doesn't f make economic sense. There's really good examples of that. I'll go over it once we get into the game. But for now, just know that start of the game, you want to start buying items that will regen your health, protect you from taking damage from uh, creeps in the lane, and also, uh, since I said that this is a spammable spell, but it also costs a lot of mana, you see it's 100 mana, and I only have 273 to start the game. And I only regen 0.7 mana every second. I need items if I want to stay in lane and spam this enough just to harass to make sure I get gold and uh, EXP. I need items to regen my mana. Now, there's two different items in the game that can do that to start the game. There's these enchanted mangoes, and there's also uh, clarity potions. The difference between the two is clarity gives you more total mana restored. It's just it it's uh, over time you get it, whereas the second you use this, you instantly get uh, 150 mana in this uh, instance. The reason why I didn't bother with that is for clarity potions, for you to get the total amount of mana restored, you can't take any damage from any hero on the other team. And since I'm a melee hero and I need to be up in everyone's face and harass to actually get farm and gold, this item really doesn't make too much sense for me because, say, I pop it, it's a little effect on you. Players in the other team see me with that on and they want to attack me just to get uh, cancel the, uh, the mana regen. So for me, it makes more sense to use this so I can just instantly pop it, instantly get some mana, and then cast some more spells. It's just... Uh, Something to keep me in lane so I don't have to go back and heal every time I run out of health or mana. So, again, this is the start of the game. There's uh, the different lanes. This is off lane for the Radiant side, which is the side I'm on right now. I'm just running over here just to be kind of close to my lane. Uh, also to prevent them from getting... Runes. Runes is a whole other video to uh, talk about. Just another thing to know is I got a new mouse for this uh, game. The DPI on it is super weird. I'm not used to it, so my camera does some pretty wonky stuff to start the game. Jump ahead oh, here. Oh, 1.5 a little bit just to get to, or two times, just to get to speed it up so when I actually get to the uh, laning phase starts off. So... Lane starts. I'm gonna go. I say good luck because I'm such a nice guy. So the one thing you want to do, uh, I'm gonna go over this real quick, is creep blocking. This is the thing that you're gonna just have to practice to actually get down. Uh, there's a command up here. I'm actually gonna go to the settings real quick just to show you uh, that this button here, cancel current action. It's S. So what you want to do is prevent your creeps from getting to the lane faster than the other team now base speed these uh go to free camera base speed these things move at 325 that's their base movement speed i move 290 so i'm going to move slower than these things do uh the other lane up here uh they're going to be doing the same thing but let's go to yeah, I, I i can't show them right now just I, mean, I think it's a pause thing but what you want to do is Stop these creeps from getting to the lane faster than uh, the other the other team. So you do that by creep blocking, which is you kind of get in their path. You stop moving by pressing X. The creeps kind of do a stutter step pause, and you just kind of dance that way all the way up through the lane. And the reason we do that is because 
if you can prevent them from getting to a lane faster than the other team, where the two creeps meet will be closer to your tower than the other team. And you really want to do that in the off lane because if you don't do that and they block, the creep wave could be even up here, which is closer to their tower, which means their carry is going to be safe because if anybody wants to try to kill him, he can just retreat under here. The tower is going to attack whoever's going after him, and it's just not a really smart thing to do. And it also means that the offlaner, which is me in this case, would have to be higher up into the lane to actually get that EXP I was talking about because the EXP, there is a radius on it, and if you're outside that radius from creeps dying, you're not going to get the experience. So if the lane's all the way up here, I have to move up closer to that, and that means that his supports, that and he's got two in the lane here, he's got this guy and this guy, they have way uh, more area to actually move around, get behind me, or harass me to push me out, or even potentially kill me and stop me from getting any farm or gold. Now, if I actually block it better than they do and the creep wave is closer to my tower, that's a benefit to me because, again, I'll be farming under my tower. If if they want the two supports want to kill me, there's they can't go around here because there's a cliff here. There's only this little bridge. If they want to kill me, they would have to go all the way around, down through here, this way, or up through the water here. And I'm going to see them because of the way... Uh, elevation works in this game again that's another video for another time but if they wanted to kill me coming from over here they're going to be within radius of this tower and oh it doesn't show it in pause but i'd be safer under mine so if they wanted to kill me you know going under here i'll be hiding under the tower tower's going to be attacking them i can attack them to maybe put a spell or two down too and maybe i'll get first blood which gives you bonus gold and maybe bonus experience too i'm not sure but generally you want to block your creeps, block them well enough so it's closer to your tower, so you have a better chance of getting EXP and gold than they do. Now, I don't do a really good job of that just because, again, I had a new mouse and I spazzed out, as you'll quickly see. I'm going to try, see, that's the blocking, that's the stutter step. See how they pause? They, they, they stop moving, but then my mouse spazzes out and I they start running past me because their movement speed's faster than mine. And I said, well, I fucked this up to start. So I kind of just try to block, and then I'm like, ah, I give up. Again, see how the wave's up here a little bit? And that means that they can uh, harass me because uh, I'll direct, uh, not direct it, wrong one, free camera. I should probably know the keyboard commands for these. but So again, wave's up here. Their carry is totally free to uh, farm. And their two supports, again, are moving past the lane to harass me, to prevent me from actually being able to farm. They're doing the right thing here. I didn't block well enough. Uh, generally, I believe when the two lanes meet, it's going to be up here. I blocked a little better than they did, but still, it didn't block enough. And I moved up too far that they were able to harass me, and I was not able to stay in lane to get EXP. So we're going to go back to my perspective, and you'll see that I put the spell down, but that's also the drawback with the spell is it's targeted area here. He got hit once, but then the second he got hit by it, he just moved out of the way. And they both positioned themselves in a way that they know I'm trying to get back underneath my tower to be safe. It just means I have to walk through them more, and that just means they're going to be able to attack me more than they normally would see what they're doing they're just right clicking me and they can get one more on me and I put this down there's a little combo you can do is if you have that iron branch if you plant it on the ground and you use the tango which are these things and you use the tango to on that branch you plant it down it counts as that ward health restored Whereas normally if you just use the tango on the tree, that's normally what they're used for. If you just use it on the tree, you're only going to get 115 health restore. But since I've used it on that iron branch, I'm going to get 230 total health. But that's still not going to restore all my health. Again, I did not bring enough healing items or the right healing items uh, for me in this lane. So you can see since this is only going to do 230 total health... 
Uh, it's going to take 16 seconds for me to get that 230, and that's only going to put me at about half health. Whereas if I maybe didn't buy one of these and bought this, or it's a healing salve, or it, it takes 8 seconds, but I get 400 total health, I'll get more health faster uh, so I can get you know closer to the creep wave than I could just with what I've got now because it's going to take longer for me to get health back. So you have to either play smarter than I did with the small amount of regen I had or buy more regen and play stupid. And I did, I played stupid with less regen. So now I'm kind of screwed. I have to wait for me to generate enough health to come back. So I'm like, oh, I fucked up terribly. I've just kind of ruined this lane. I have to wait for me to actually get some health back. But then this guy came and put a stun. Now, as I said before, I'm not going to really talk about the other heroes in the game, except for when it's necessary. And it's necessary in this game to talk about this hero here, uh, Marana. Now, when I do the Maran video, I'll explain this spell a little bit more. But she's going as a roaming support, and all that means is she's casting this one spell. And it's a spell that you target. It's not like the spell I've got where, see, I've casted a spot in the ground and it just goes there and it only does this effect. Hers is, uh, you just just have to guess. It's kind of a blind shot stun where the farther away you are from where the person gets stunned, the max stun they get. Whereas uh, she kind of casted it. I'll put a uh, free camera. She casted it over here and she guessed that this guy was going to move this way. So she led him with this uh, sacred arrow and she timed it well. I'll back up a little bit just so we can see. I'll, I'll play this here with from her player's perspective from Marana. All right, well, so she's moving up. She's trying to guess. And then she, she see how far away she is, uh, free camera. She shot from all the way back here. And uh, the radius for this is super long. And the maximum stun you can take is five. So the f there's some math involved for finding out how much much of a stun duration you're going to take. But it's just a lot of guessing where, okay, he kind of is going around this way. I'm just going to guess that he's going to come this way. And he walks right into it. So he's being stunned. It's not the max five seconds, but it's long enough. And as you'll see in this game, the way that uh, Firestorm is going to work is... The longer they're in the Firestorm, the more damage they're going to take. And since this Sacred Arrow that she has can stun for a pretty substantial amount of time, that means anything that's, uh, if I cast Firestorm directly on them, they're going to take a bunch of damage than they normally would. So it's a really good combination. So you see I'm running up. I'm like, oh, I got to put that down. I probably got like one or two stacks on them, but I was a little too far back for me to actually be able to uh, get max amount of damage off of that. So thankfully she came in a lane, kind of helped me out. So I'm able to get back in the lane and start denying some creeps. I mean, this was in a really awkward spot. I had to eat some more tangos back up a little bit. I could probably play a little bit more aggressive than I am now, but I'm playing super safe. I probably shouldn't. So they're going to harass me a bit more. Now I've got the atrophy aura up, as I said here. Anything within this aura, you see how wide it is. They're going to do, at level 1, they're going to do 7% less damage than they normally would. So that's why I usually level these two up. Uh, I put that spell down. The whole object of me putting this spell down is to... Oh, God damn it. Free camera. i got to remember. Is I put Every time I put the spell down, it's specifically meant to... Uh, Put it within the creep wave and also catch the uh, hit this guy because since he's melee and the only way he can get farm is if he's actually physically right next to the creeps to hit them. He has to stand within this to actually get any farm. The set every time that thing's on cooldown, I'm just going to put it down to either get some farm, harass that carry so he's not able to get any farm, stay close close enough away so if anybody wants to go on me or the my heroes, they're going to, uh, hero, guys on my team, they're, and then, again, the Sacred Arrow again, he's casting it, 
my camera, he ran right into it. So he was a little closer than he was last time. So the stun duration isn't as long, but his health is low enough that I know that if I land this with a few right clicks, he's going to probably die. Oh, man, they just yeah. And see, so I put that down. He took a couple of hits, probably like two or three of that. I walked up, right clicked him. And as you see there, he was a uh, hero. So I got the 30 bonus damage. So my damage is, you know, plus 45 from, let's see, that's one hero and three creeps. So if I wanted to turn back around, the uh, let's go to player's perspective for Ursa, this guy here. He's within the atrophy aura, so he's doing 7% less damage because of that. And I guess the math works out where he's going to do minus 3 than he normally would. That's just how the math works out. But he's also within radio of the, uh, the radius of the firestorm. So if he wants to hit me and harass me, he's going to be taking this, but he's also going to be doing less damage. That's kind of how the um, general gist of how this uh, Underlord hero goes, is you're just meant to uh, put this down and walk around with this and just harass. Uh, make sure that you've bought enough regen so you don't have these issues like I did. Uh, I didn't buy enough regen, so I'm just uh, waiting to farm enough to actually buy a few items to, again, complement the hero. Since we're at past the point now of the game starting, I mean, it's still only three minutes. So again, this is farming, denying as best I can. Eat another tank, go. So I've used up all of my regen. And see, uh... You see that this effect around him, he's using that clarity potion I was telling you about. If I was to use that, since he's ranged, he can actually hang back. And if I wanted to go on him, I've, I'm all the way back here. I'm not. It's going to take a while for me to get up to him. Whereas if I had this clarity potion on me, since he's ranged, he can just walk up, right click me once, my mana regen's gone. So that's why I chose to go with the, the, the mangoes over that uh, clarity potion. If I wanted to, I could cast a spell... And I thought about it a few times, but I didn't end up doing it. So, again, it's just farming up. I've pretty much got enough uh, money to get some boots so I can run faster. So, I've run out of regen, so i got to be super careful. But, again, uh, let's look at this guy here. He's got very little uh, regen himself. And I know that... My constant spamming of the spell is going to eat through all of his region, and unless he buys some more, he's going to be in a really tough spot. Because I, he doesn't have enough regen, I'm going to be able to put that spell down. He's just going to take so much more damage, he's got no way of healing past it. So he's just going to have to retreat from the lane eventually unless he buys himself enough regen. So again, I kind of played a little too safe here since I've got these spells here I believe I could probably harass way better than I'm doing right now which uh, they're going on me here and again landed another great stun I'm just gonna stand here and make sure that they eat that firestorm and also with a combination of the atrophy or again if I didn't have this on me I probably would be dead by now but since it's doing enough of a job preventing him from killing me I'm able to escape to get underneath the tower that's what that durable thing means. So again, I was ran back. I was probably a little too scared here. I had enough health. I probably could have turned back around. I saw that he was fighting him. They were both super low. If I paid attention more than I did, you know, this is me just playing way too conservative, way too scared because I had such low health. If I actually moved up here faster than I did, I probably could have saved Marana. But as it was... They both ended up dying. I was able to kill the Ursa with the Firestorm. But if I played smarter and was a bit more aware on the map than I was, I probably could have kept her alive. So again, since I have zero regen items, I have to walk all the way back to base, regen, health, and then teleport back to lane. And while this is happening, everybody up here is totally able to farm. Stay there, get EXP, where I have to come all the way back. I'm missing all of these creeps. I'm not getting any gold. I'm not getting any EXP. So it's a real detriment if you don't buy any regen items to keep you alive in the laning phase. And you're just going to fall behind in EXP and farm. So that's why it's really smart and worth you actually 
buying enough regen items to keep you up here because as an offlaner again all you really needed to do is get levels and the only way you can get levels is if you stay in lane so you need to make sure you buy enough regen to make sure that happens so again he's kind of by himself I probably could harass a bit more than I am now but yep see I put it down and again he ate a few hits of it and that damage does start uh, adding up and you see here he's only got one bit of regen left and I believe that my spell actually can do more damage than that regen's worth so he either has to play a bit smarter or safer than he is now or buy more regen and I believe uh, in this game he did not so again I have put that down all these creeps are dying I'm stacking up all this bonus damage so if he wants to actually farm I can just go right up to him and just start hitting him a bunch of times because I'm going to do bonus damage and if he wants to go against me he's going to do less and if any of the creeps come in i can put this down while i'm attacking him i'll get more damage uh to stack on him so i put it down again he got hit like once but now he's staying out of lane and i'm starting to accumulate some damage and so that's why i walked up again he backed off and he's only got a little bit of regen left and it's going under the tower here, so he's a little bit safe. If I try to go on him now, I'd probably die because I'd be taking a bunch of damage from the tower along with him. So in the meantime, I'm just kind of hanging out here, casting it on these jungle creeps to get a bit more golden farm because it make, doesn't make much sense for me to actually show in lane. So I get a bit of gold here, a little bit of EXP. And now I'm just... Um, I probably should have headed directly back to lane, and I really didn't. So, this is another really good stun. They were way back. I instantly saw the arrow. I tried to guide them in here. And since it's such a narrow walkway, that arrow has a way better chance of hitting than, say, if it was down here or here. Next time I do it, if I was a bit smarter and they weren't such low health, I would probably put this back here farther. So, if they wanted to escape, they would have to walk through it more than they normally would. But since that stun lasted long enough, we were able to kill him before that went off. Again, th that stun and this is a great combo. So I'm getting more bonus damage. He's got to back off because we're both in lane here. He can get out harassed more than if he went on us. And again, we're starting moving into that phase of getting items to complement you here. And since I go through a lot of mana, it makes a lot of sense to buy items that gives me mana, whether it's mana regen, mana. I'm going to say it either way, and it's probably going to drive you both, everybody watching this, nuts, but I'm going to see it either way. Every uh, 55 seconds, I press a button, I get uh, 250 extra mana. And that was another decent stun. Put it down. I don't know if we got him, but as you saw how I put it down, I kind of led him, led, it, led him a bit, so that if he, I'm going to back up a bit. 10 seconds, and we'll play it again. So, I saw the stun come, and they he, he aimed it perfectly. Now, if I was a bit smarter, what I would do is either lead him a bit, so I would put it ahead of him a little bit more, so that if he wanted to keep running away, he would have to traverse through the entire Firestorm and take more damage. Another thing to uh, keep in mind is when you put this down, try to put it in ways that make that leads them to where you want them to go or if they run away they're going to eat more damage than they normally would otherwise whereas i just put it down in the center and he ran away but i should have put it a little farther out all right anyway moving on he comes back to lane again so this is that thing you do now is you got a bunch of firestorm you're starting to snowball see i'm level six he's level four so i got levels on him now and that means I have more points into the spell, which means I can do way, start doing more damage than I normally would. And as you see here, he has no regen now. So every like chance he gets hit by this thing, he's going to start taking a bunch of damage. And now he's just going to try to muscle me out of lane because I have you know low enough health that he can do it. I don't know if he's got people behind him. So I was playing a little safe here. But... If he just stays in lane here, I know that I can cast this right on the way because he needs to farm it. And the only way he can farm it is when he's actually within melee range. But I'm also going to put it down here so it's going to catch all of the creeps. He's going to take like a tick or two like he did there. And it's just going to slowly start whittling his health down. And if they want to go on me, this is me staying 
way too far up in the lane. I mean, granted, these two guys have been missing for a long time. I probably should have been a little bit safer than I was just because my health was so low, but I wasn't. But at this point, I'm clearly not going to live, even with all of the points in the atrophy order here. It's minus 29 damage all these guys are doing, but uh, let's go real quick to free camera. If we just look, you know, minus 16 damage, minus 17 damage, he's doing minus 16. They're all doing a little less damage, but since I've got so little low health to begin with, it doesn't matter. That's, again, me not having any regen items. I did buy a regen regen that gives me 2 HP per second, but it it wasn't enough. And I just thought, oh, I'm about to die. Maybe I can sneak a kill on it, him, but it wasn't in time. That's just me not having enough regen, having low enough health, being a little too cocky with my damage and levels and I fed a kill there and he got a level up from that I'm dead for a certain amount of time he can farm freely for that short amount of time got my teleports I'm just gonna teleport back to lane I don't know what I'm oh I'm waiting to get this headdress so again now we're getting into the items that compliments me this is an aura to everybody within 900 units that gives them bonus health regen which, as you see, their orange health regen is three, which also applies to me as well. So comp starting to combo this, I'm going to heal everybody within the 900, bunch of health. And everybody who is within this radius is also going to start doing less damage to me and everybody on my team within this. So since I've got full health and full mana, and I know that he doesn't have any regen items, I'm just going to keep spamming this, making sure it hits him. And you see how low his health is. He didn't bother buying any regen. I know I get hit him a couple of times. See how much damage he's taken from that? And he's got to run away now. If I was smart, I would have turned around and probably attacked him. And this is where everybody... I get four people on me. And again, since I have max atrophy aura here, he felt... thought, Okay, there's a bunch of guys here. Us three should be able to actually kill him. But since I've also got the health regen... I've got this. Everyone around me is doing less damage to me. I feel confident enough that this guy wasn't smart. He probably should have not come up. And I know that that he was going to die. And as you see, everyone else here, super low health. I probably even could have stayed in. Actually, I did this uh, probably the better thing here. Since I've got seven more seconds before I can put the spell down again. Everyone's super low here. I just felt like, I don't know if I'm going to get back in time. I'm just going to start scaring them by going on them. They're all super low health, and they got to run away. And you said, that was four guys that went on me. They weren't able to kill me. That's how strong this ability is. Granted, a couple of them had low health to begin with, but that's what makes Underlord super strong when he gets enough levels on the other team. This thing can keep you alive longer than normal heroes would be. Anybody else I had there probably would have been dead. That's why, you know, off lane it's super good to get the levels. He doesn't need farm so much as long as he can start leveling up his abilities. And that's the only reason I was able to stay alive is because of this Atrophy Aura. So again, I'm just farming up another item to help me and my team, which is Mechanism, which... Every 65 seconds, I press a button. Everybody within the radius, so I believe it's still 600, is going to get 250 health. So again, I'm just playing this as a team support, getting a bunch of auras to help me and my team uh, survive and win in team fights. And I know that I'm strong enough, I can bully that guy again. He has no regen. He's got to play super safe. Almost at this point, I probably would have gave up the lane and gone into the jungle and farmed because then he's not going to have someone like me on him. Whereas, I'm just going to stay back behind these trees and just cast this any chance I get where I know he's going to take a bunch of damage from it. And now he's got to run away again. He wants farm, but he can't get it just because Firestorm does so much damage. Even at max level here. And again, he's got low... No regen whatsoever. He's only getting 2.8 regen a second. That's not going to keep him alive. So at this point, after we've maxed out both of these, we're going to start uh, leveling up the Pit of Malice. You'll see at level 1, it's kind of bad. Especially at this point in the game, it's only 0.9 seconds, not even a whole second. So he's even less now. I'm going to wait for him to get in the lane. I'll put this down again. Start taking on the damage. 
He got hit twice there, and now he's got to run away. He's super low. He can't stay in lane. Now he's got to go back to base. So effectively, I've... I don't want to say I've single-handedly won the lane. I definitely haven't. I had some help, but I've got the levels now. I got the abilities. He wasn't smart enough to get any regen. So now I can just bully him as much as I want. So at this point, uh, I came down to the bottom lane, and there's a hero here who, whenever he's in these spider webs, is invisible. So the only way we could kill him is if we had some sort of detection. And there is an item that lets you... Uh, see invisible heroes in the area. So you just have to make sure that when you use this, they're within range of it. So I was just waiting for the item to come, and it is right now, but they jumped on him beforehand. So as you'll see, I'm going to cast a stun, and again, instantly, they all, I'll back up a little bit here just so you can see how quickly this thing um, stuns and then disappears after level one. So put it down. All right, every single one of them got rooted. Another gone. See how quickly that didn't last? Ideally, if you're confident enough and you know that the heroes that you're casting on don't have an instant blink away, you would cast this first so they take that first tick of damage, then put this down right afterwards. So it would hold them in place just that little bit longer so they would take maybe one or two more ticks than they normally would. So wait a little too long. We weren't able to keep save them. I'm waiting for me to get the... Uh, I'm going to back up again just to show you how this ring works. So if they leave and then come back. So he stayed around this. See, he got rooted again because he stayed in the circle. That was at 3.6 seconds. He got rooted again. Didn't leave. This is clearly you know, demarcated on the map to say, don't stand in this. But he came back in and he died. So, again, it casted that down. Cooldown's kind of long, 32 seconds, as you see. So, it really doesn't make too much sense to level this to start with. So, now we're at the point that in order for us to win this game, their carries, these two heroes here, they're designed to win the game if it goes on long enough. Whereas, we really don't. I mean, this character here can get super strong the longer the game goes on, but it just takes a long time. And before that would happen, they probably would win. So we know that in order for us to win this game, we have to uh, kill them before the uh, game gets too late. And that was a terrible pit of malice there. They clearly were teleporting here. I should have done it way sooner than I did. But that's just me being a terrible player. The prize is mine. And if they actually did get rooted, I probably would have popped that. And they probably would have died again. So now I've got that mech I was telling you about that... Every 65 seconds, I press a button, everybody within the radius gets healed. Again, these are all items I, I, I'm planning on buying items to complement uh, not just me, but everyone, my, everybody on my team so we can end the game faster than, than we normally would. So now we're just waiting for our creep wave to get up to the tower so we can destroy this tower since we're way stronger. And then again, we saw that they were charging in. I put that down to protect them. So I hit the button again to get some heals back up on my team. I probably shouldn't be running back here like this. I should be up here helping my team get some kills. But again, I'm not a great player. I can realize my, state, my mistakes after the fact, which again also goes towards you getting better at the game if you actually replay uh watch the replays of your game so you can sit there and understand okay i'm clearly doing something wrong here and you may not notice it when the game's going on i definitely played a little too safe here i should have realized that we're super strong as a group now we've got the items whereas we can just group up and just probably steamroll their team which is what we're trying to do now see again how quickly that how quickly that stun doesn't last. It only really becomes super effective if you've got a bunch of other people on your team or if you get uh, probably three levels into it so it's one and a half second stun. But at this point, again, we got four of us here. They, they're carries, again, they need to farm and get levels and get items to be of any use. It's 16 minutes into the game now. Right now, 
this person has really no items whatsoever. So, they have to... They need to farm longer to actually be able to get any, uh... Any items, and it's still too early in the game for that to happen. And we're super strong, there's no way... And this is me using that ultimate. You see how big this radius, how clear it is. All of us, we've got our... We did our objective, now we're just gonna go back to base and heal. And that's basically what this, that all that ult does in when you've got your objective and now you're just like, okay, you got all we need, let's get back to base, regroup, get our items, get all our uh, uh, health back. And the next item I got is Guardian Greaves. All that does is combine that mech and that uh, arcane boots together into one item. So you just have your inventory spaces and cluttered up by having those two necessary items because those two... Items, the arcane boots and the mech are super strong to have as a team. So, real quick about this one. So, I paused it real quick. Again, this has to do with knowing where to put this down. Again, like I said up here before when we killed uh, the Ursa that one time, he got stunned. And I probably should have led him more with my abilities than I did. I tried to put this behind these heroes here so if they wanted to run away they would actually have to run the entire distance of this whereas if I put it you know down here closer to the tower there's less room for them to run back so start thinking about when it's a good idea to lead I guess you could say lead the heroes on the other team and when it's a good idea to put it down directly on them but in this case they want to run back he's got to go all the way through this but he just stayed in that uh, area way too long and he got rooted a bunch of times us as a group we're way stronger at this point in the game than they are that even if I just stand up close to their carry where if he had a bunch of items this was way later in the game he would destroy me at this point of the game we're way stronger I can just stand right next to him I'll put my firestorm down I'll, I've got my aura maxed out he's gonna do way less damage us as a group will destroy him before he's actually able to do anything to us. So now it's all just about grouping up and getting objectives. We can bully anybody away. We're way stronger than they are. I keep uh, stressing that point, but there's no way they can beat us as a group. So we're just playing the objectives, and the objectives are destroying all these little towers you see on the map. Top Everyone stays within my aura. They all get the health regen, get the mana regen. Everyone against us is doing less damage. Uh, dire's top towers under attack. And now they're just uh, poking us. And again, once this thing goes down, I'm going to pop this. We got our objective. Everyone stays within our group. And we back right out. I'm sure I probably should have been smarter with the radiant, the, the courier than we were, but... Whatever. The next item I got is a bit questionable whether or not I should have got it. It's, uh, what's it called? It is Blade Mail. I have to wait for this thing to get out of the way. So what this is, it reflects any damage taken. I, Any damage I take back to the unit that dealt it to me. And the only way this really works is if I can get them to attack me with any of their spells or abilities and there's only a few heroes within the game that can force you to attack them this uh, underlord is not one of them so maybe what I should have done is probably gone for a different item to help my team out more which would probably be the pipe of insight or crimson guard one of these just gives you a shield that protects you from magic damage while this does a shield that protects you from physical damage and again even though they're level 14 doesn't have many items but us as a group I put that down look how much damage they took just from eating that ability and now they're dead this guy has very like no items whatsoever so there was no way that he was gonna survive against us the kind of plan for the game going long and winning but again we're trying to win the game before any uh, any other heroes can't get enough items in Towers under attack. Oh, man. Before they can actually get any items to make themselves strong enough to win the game. 
That was a pretty decent stun. I'm trying to lead them a bit, so if they they have to walk through that to take a bunch of damage, that this was taking a bunch of damage. Everyone else was able to uh, attack them in the process, and they died. So again, I'm going to stay in the here. going to make sure that they all take less damage. Uh, it's like, oh, we're probably not going to win this. So I'm kind of low on health, and I just got everybody out of there. We may have been able to win, but I, th I felt it was safer if we just backed out when we did. So that's really what that spell's for when you're using it defensively. Just realizing, oh crap, it doesn't look like we're going to win this fight. It's best if we teleport out. So you hit the button. Everyone on your team sees it. Uh, that also puts a giant red marker above your head saying, everyone kill me first. Otherwise, they're going to get out. And... They weren't able to do it in time, and we were able to get out of there. So at this point, the game's kind of over. It's just a matter of us getting a few more items. But at this point, it's, again, staying as a group. It's just kind of farming up a few more items to get the final push. I'm going to fast forward a bit, actually, before it, see if anything happens. Yeah, there's a lot of downtime here where if I was smart, I would uh, farm and get some levels and whatnot. Just fast forwarding more. This is a lot of nothing happening. So now we're going into their jungle to group up again. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, now let's. I think we might actually group up for some uh, a team fight again. So put it down. They're all stuck in there. Again, it's just making sure that I stand around, everybody on the other team stuck in my atch the aura, they're not going to do any damage. They have to sit here and take Firestorm damage. I start accumulating more bonus damage. I know that he's going to come back to life because of uh, an item. He got rooted in place, got stunned, really good combos, and then he died. So again. Any other time in the game, or any other game, he was able to farm to get some items. He would be way more of a threat than he is now, but he wasn't able to. And us as a team just ended up really dominating the game. The team fight's over. We're going to fast forward a bit. Oh, okay, okay, so... I just know that I can... Get in there with my abilities or spells. And if anybody goes on anybody on my team, I can just throw throw the Firestorm down or the, uh, what's it called, Pitamelis? And just go up there and start right clicking them and just scare them away, which I did with that Rubik there. And anybody wants to go on me, I just pop this because they're going to start eating damage. And... I'm getting healed from somebody else's ability. I'm not going to talk about Winter Wyvern or Wyvern until I actually do that hero. But at this point, it was just staying as a group and eventually uh, finishing the game off. And there's not much else I can reiterate here other than we're at the point now that just know that you need to start getting some items to either compliment you or your heroes at this point. At this point, I don't think there's really anything else to I could add into this video that we already haven't seen. Just know, uh, I hope I've showed enough of this hero that that you know how you would generally play him in the offlane. Again, make sure you buy enough items to keep you alive. Don't be stingy with regen, otherwise you end up having to run back to base and you end up screwing yourself over in EXP. Play smart. Realize... Uh, what heroes you're going against again that's just going to come with experience you're going to lose a lot of your first games playing Dota that's just to be expected don't let it frustrate you the only way the best way to learn is just by doing so just know that you're going to have to lose a bunch of times be okay with losing it's totally fine Under you'll eventually learn the matchups uh, how each hero works in what situation and just keep at it Again, buy the items that will complement you. It will counter your heroes. Play smart. 
think about where you're going to put your spells down and if you need to lead them, whether or not it makes sense to lead them. Like, this is a good example here. They got to walk all the way through it. If they were a little bit slower, they probably would have gotten stunned again. Thank you all for watching. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for the next hero you want to see, uh, let me know in the comments. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube garbage. And again, thank you all for watching. This is Hobbyfish playing Dota. Uh, I'll see you next time.